Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University, and in this video, I'm going to talk about alcohol nomenclature. We're going to start off with a relatively simple alcohol, uh, just uh, very simple. And the name of this molecule is ethanol. I wanted to start with ethanol as something simple and compare it to the parent alkane, ethane. The alcohol functional group changes the suffix of a name from the E in ethane to the OL suffix. And so naming an alcohol, at least the simple alcohols, is as simple as identifying the parent alkane. as simple as identifying the parent alkane, ethane, and putting all at the end of it. Now, oh, yeah, uh -huh. <clears throat> ethane is the most complicated, well, it was one of the more complicated alcohols that we can draw without requiring locants. And so here, for example, if we wanted to look at the structure of an alcohol called propanol, we could draw our propane chain. But there are actually two different positions that we could put the alcohol on, on propane. I'm going to make those lines black. There you go. Our alcohol could either be at one end of the chain, or in the middle of the chain. And if you're looking at this, you might actually think, well, wait a minute, why can't it be at the other end of the chain also? We'll look at all three cases. All right. But clearly there are different ways of connecting this molecule, which are going to require us to use locants. So we're going to put numbers on the chain, starting with the alcohol carbon and numbering to the end of the chain. And so this molecule, the first one I drew, is one propanol. So just because I put it on the right-hand side, we can't be tricking ourselves into thinking that it's something else. This molecule where the alcohol is in the middle, we can't put one in the middle. We have to start numbering somewhere. And the molecule is symmetric. So if I numbered from the left or from the right, I would still get the two in the middle. And this is two propanol. And I want you to convince yourself that this third structure over here is actually just one propanol as well. It's not different than the first one. I've just flipped it around. <clears throat> and so when we name alcohols, we use locants to indicate where the alcohol is or indicate which carb let's be on which carbon atom the alcohol group is. Okay. And the alcohol group gets the lowest number possible at this point. As you learn more about nomenclature and organic chemistry, you're going to learn that there is a priority amongst the functional groups. And eventually you'll learn that alcohol is not the highest priority functional group. So there are other functional groups that will get assigned lower numbers over the alcohol functional group. And that's a topic for another video. I have just two more examples I want to do in this, this brief introduction. And the first one that I want to do is a cyclic alcohol. So just like alkenes, alcohols can be cyclic structures. And we name the base alkane. Right? So, that, so 
Without the alcohol on it, this would just be cyclohexane. Right? And we need to put the we need to change the suffix from the e to the ol for the alcohol. And in the case of the cyclic alcohol, we do not need to put on a locant yet because <clears throat> In a cyclic structure, the alcohol is always going to be at carbon 1. So as long as there's no other substituent here, we do not need to, to write the locant in the name. Alright, now we're going to do an example a little bit later in another video where we have a more complex structure and we are going to need to use locants. Okay. But in the case of cyclohexanol, there's no other way we, we could put cyclohexanol, we put the alcohol in any other carbon on the cyclohexane ring and it's still one cyclohexanol. I'm going to just do two other examples really quickly uh, before the, I end this video. And then I'm going to have another video with uh, more complex examples. And here's an alcohol with substituents. And I, I, I added a complexity of putting uh, the stereochemistry in here. And so all we need to do is identify the parent chain. This parent chain has five carbons. So this molecule is going to start off as pentane, but we're going to replace the E with the OL right now. And we need to assign our locants so that our alcohol carbon atom ends up with the lowest possible number. All right, so that means that it's going to be at position 2. So this is now 2 pentanol. And then we need to put we need to include in the name the methyl substituent, which is at carbon 4. And so this molecule can be named 4-methyl-2-pentanol. I also want to tell you about uh, a different way to write this name that is perfectly acceptable uh, according to the IUPAC, and that's to call this 4 methyl pentan 2 all to put the 2 right in front of the suffix. And in my next video where we're going to look at more complicated examples, you're going to see exactly why we might want to do this. The, the last example that I want to do in this video is to just do a, a simple diol, a molecule that has two alcohols in it. And I'm going to put them... Oh, I forgot something in this other example. If I was in a live classroom, I would hope my students would call me out. There's stereochemistry here. And so we need to establish the proper uh, stereochemistry. The alcohol has the highest priority in the conning gold prelog rules. The isobutyl chain, this carbon atom is attached to other carbon atoms, so it's priority two. The methyl group is priority three. So in terms of establishing stereochemistry, our order of uh, Substituents is clockwise. I'm sorry, this is counterclockwise. So we need to say that this is S. 4 methyl 2 pentanol. Or S 4 methyl pentan 2 all. Right. Let's just do a simple diol. So a diol is a molecule that has two alcohol functional group. You can have triols, tetrols, and all kinds of other things. We want to number our diol so that we end up with the lowest possible combination of locants. So let's, you know, in this case the molecule is symmetric, so that's one, two, and three. And this again has some kind of, it started off as a propane, but instead of calling it propanol, this molecule gets to the suffix diol, and we put that locants up, locants, sorry, up front. So this could be one, three propane diol. Though it is perfectly okay to put the locants again right in front of the suffix. So you could also describe this as propane 1,3-diol. 
In my next video, I'm going to do more complicated examples uh, with some other functional groups in them. And you know, so, so stay tuned for that video for more examples of alcohol nomenclature. Thank you for watching.